Yes, sure. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. Oh, no, no um, worries. Man. Thank you for your time. Yes, okay, so I have so many questions to get to, but what I'm so curious about is you've talked, so you're, you've mentioned that sort of getting to work on Guardians 3 was like closing a loop, right? Because you did the Correct. first one and now you're coming back. Yes. Um, and you've spoken about that evolution a little bit. I mean, obviously the technology, James's style, your style, we'll get into all of that. But yeah. can you sort of tell me about, I mean, what this has been like to come back and what that evolution actually looked like for you? I mean, it, it was, it was, uh, you know, I was very sad when I could, uh, couldn't do volume two, mm. <laughs> even though, uh, even though I, you know, I, I did Doctor Strange and that was pretty fun to do <laughs> as well. Um, but at the time, Doctor Strange pushed like for five months and everything, so it didn't align anymore. I couldn't do uh, Volume Two, but uh, but I was very pleased when you know, and I really tried to make it work as much as I could uh, to come back and and do this with James, you know, and finish the trilogy with James. And and he was kind enough to invite me back. Um, and it, it just like for me it was like I wanted to to do this because I wanted to see the ending of that, that story. Uh, and, and even more because it was so based on rocket, you know, and, mm. and his, his backstory and things we had actually discussed in very extensively with James already at, at the time as we were doing the first film, you know, what, where did, where did he come from? What happened to him? You know, I, I didn't have all the detail of what he ended up writing for volume three, but we knew he had a pretty, difficult uh, backstory. So um, coming back for that and then being able to revisit those characters and and work with a new Groot and and uh, work again with all the cast and and being able to uh, to bring, you know, after 10 years almost, um, the new technologies and things that would allow James to actually really um, take it up another level um, was, was very exciting for me, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, so to kind of go back a little bit, I'm curious because you are working within this larger machine. What is sort of maybe your your personal stamp, your philosophy, your style? Like what makes something like yours, would you say? Oh, it's interesting because I, even though I, as you say, I work, I work in that big machine, mm -hmm. you, know, you and everything, I, I've I've always been lucky enough to actually do the the shows that are a little different, <laughs> the ones that are a little, uh, uh, yeah. kind of like that, that have a, a slightly different edge to them, you know, like not, not like the, the big Avengers kind of like timeline, uh, but more like the, the ones that are, you know, requiring a, something that is a different vibe. Um, and that comes from, you know, I'm French and I've worked at, at, uh, at, uh, a company in Paris that was called Buff and that uh, years ago and that did a lot of commercials with like up and coming directors like Michel Gondry and all these these kind of people and we we always had a bit of a uh, an edge for design stuff and uh, so I learned a lot there and then I you know I worked with the Wachowski brothers and sisters and <laughs> uh and uh, uh, uh I've, I've worked on the Matrix I've, I've always worked on kind of kind of uh films that have a little edge to them you know i've been lucky enough to do that um so in terms of my my trajectory at marvel i've they've been like they've you know they've yeah. offered me to i i did you know i did second unit on the first captain america and on thor 2 uh but then when they offered me this i said this is totally the kind of thing i i love doing you know this is like world building and I love doing this. And I, I've been lucky enough to do world building here on Guardians and then on Doctor Strange. And then, you know, expand the world building that had happened on Ant-Man and the Wasp and then do Eternals, which was, you know, different again, even more world building. And and so I love doing this kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, and I think that's why we clicked very well with James on the first film, because, you know, it's he loves doing that, too. Mm -hmm. I think something that has stood out to me is I feel like your work always has this like emotional core to it like in between all the visual effects and I think that mm -hmm. really stands out in this one with Rocket um, and you've talked about like the animals and sort of making them emote I mean can you tell me about that about how you sort of allow 
for space for that to happen within sort of these large, truly larger yeah. than life, crazy. Well, it's it's it comes from my philosophy of you know um, we all were here to service the story, right? So it's not we're not just doing even though you know we do some really cool eye candy stuff. It's it it needs to dis to serve the story. So and with a director like James, I mean, there's no doubt this is the character. It's all about the characters and what they're going through. So coming on on this film. Um, we we discussed you know quite a bit about the flashbacks because that's the core of the film and it's the story of the of the film and ultimately that's what this, the trilogy is is telling us you know the story of Rocket more than anything else and um, um, and then you know we, we, James was like I want to shoot this the same way I, I shoot everything in the film and I, and you know I, I came up with the idea of okay well then let let's shoot that you know in a in a virtual environment with your actors, all four actors mm -hmm. should be here. We're not going to invent the wheel, right? It's like we're not we're not going to spend years and years because uh, we don't have that time um, trying to figure out what you have in your head. We're going to do it with the actors like we do, but they're all virtual act. You know, they're all going to be CG characters in the end. But we can put ourselves into kind of a little theater, you know. Uh, and shoot this. The we actually shot it the first two days of of uh, principal photography, and we mm. shot all the flashback on the first two days. All these emotional scenes with all four actors. You know, obviously we didn't have Bradley Cooper, but we had Sean Gunn, who always does Rocket on set, anyways. And everybody was there, and we filmed it like film theater uh, with the real cameras that we use in that virtual production kind of setup, which was. Not about capturing, doing motion captures on the actor. It was motion capture on the camera, because James is very specific about his camera moves, and that's something I didn't want to have to guess later. You know, I wanted to get something that we could film, that James could direct, with actors that could do their lines and and deliver us the most beautiful emotional uh, performance, get it edited, and then give it to our friends at Frame Store so that they could. They could do the work with a very, you know, strong foundation that is a guide for everything they've done after that. And mm -hmm. so it's that that kind of you get the best of the emotion when you film something for real, and then you translate it and transpose it with the the grain animators we have into into our our CG characters. But all all of that works together. You know, we we I keep saying that same thing, which is. To me right now, there's that big question about AI and all that stuff. And this is not a, this is the absolute antithesis of this. This is people, humans working together as artists and creating something together. We're using computers on our side, but that there's no world in which this would happen without the beautiful performance we got from the from the actors and James directing them, you know, so it's it's all actually very human what we've done, and that's what comes out on screen is like the emotion is real, because it comes from real people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and for me that was very important to to give that you know, to James as we were preparing the film, like what is the what is the best way of getting the best performance without us having to guess it later, you know. Um, now we're going to shoot it like theater reference shoot everything is there we the actors are going to give us their voice and that's what we're going to use and their performance and that's what we're going to use as a as a guide and that that gave us all the emotion we needed mm -hmm. so how do you because this has what is it i wrote it down 3066 yes. vfx shot yes so how do you keep that core in that massive, massive volume, which I feel like you have been underselling your, you know, but I mean, it is a lot. So how do it you, is a how lot. do you it, manage that? Yeah, I mean, we do talk, I mean, in all these interviews we've done, you know, we do talk about the one or mostly, you know, that big shot, that big action sequence at the, at the end mm -hmm. of the movie and uh, the, the scenes in the cages and, and also the, you know, when they go on the orgoscope, that meat planet. But when you look at the film, there's so much in there. There is nowhere, we had to recreate nowhere at the beginning of the film, you know, we had to do Cosmo the dog, uh, we had to create Counter Earth, which is a CG city that blows up, you know, we have to uh, uh, have the Bowie, the spaceship kind of, 
do space battles with monsters and destroy half of the interior of nowhere and then you know crashing onto counters i mean it's endless and it's just i mean we we're able to do this because uh you know we have a very good director that knows what he wants which makes a huge difference uh and how we can deliver that that amount of work in that amount of time um and also we have great vendors all around the world when we you know we're talking about frame store weta and and uh and uh, uh, image work, Sony image work, but we had 10 vendors on the film and, you know, they were Rodeo in Canada and Rise in England and Germany and, and Booth in France, my old company in France, um, you know, all these people and it's, it's hundreds of people and our days are actually really, really, really busy. Um, and we're very, very organized. You know, my my producing team here uh, uh, that we had at Marvel uh, with my producer Susan Pickett and all my all my team. You know, that is on the studio side with me to kind of, you know, take care of all of that is very, very uh, efficient. So it it it's very, it's difficult. I mean, it the quantity is is the killer. Because the you know most of the time you say you can have quantity but not quality and mm -hmm. there was no there was no room for not having quality where we were also dedicated to giving these characters a proper send off you know to just make a beautiful movie that where the visual effects would actually pull you in rather than take you out you know mm -hmm. and uh, and it, it it also comes from I think you know with working with all the vendors. Everybody loved these characters. They all love the Guardians. They all love Rocket. Um, and they they love working with James too because he's a very, very uh, good director that knows what he wants. So it, it makes it not easy for us, but it makes it clearer, you know, and we get, we get to the result faster and then we can make it look even better after that. Mm. Um, so it, it, it trickles down from the top, you know. Um, and that was very important and you could feel you could really feel the love you know like everybody was just love these characters and you can feel it with when you talk to the teams everywhere around the world it's like they want to do their best work for these people and especially knowing it's the last one mm -hmm. um, and it transpires on screen i think um this is so dorky but i'm so curious like when you're sitting behind your computer actually doing the work what does that look like what does that feel like and then how do you know when something is done and you can sort of move on to something else? Like, what is your, what does that kind of creative process actually feel like to be? Well, I'm going to be very clear. I don't do all the work myself. Well, <laughs> yes, but I mean, people that do it. I, I, I like mostly, you, I mostly yeah. interact with James and, and, you know, we talk about what needs to happen for every shot and every moment. And, and you know, we, and then I trans, I transmit that to our vendors. Sometimes we have meetings with the vendors you know, my, my day to day is a lot of reviewing stuff, giving notes, talking to everybody, then showing stuff to James, getting James on the phone with, you know, with the vendor sometimes because it's more like directing note than is a finesse that only him can can give us. Um, I mean, for the people that like, there's so many different uh, type of jobs in the VFX world, you know, when you think about it, we are the digital version of of what's happening on set. We have people mm -hmm. that build sets. We have people that build costumes. We have people that, you know, do hair on the characters. We have people that do special effects, our simulation people. We have people that do lighting. We have lighters. We have people that animate cameras. We have all these kind of jobs that are the, the reflection of what happens on the set when we shoot and which is the continuation of that. And, um, and it's it's it, there's so many talents and various talents that that are involved in making one frame for the movie. It's it's insane, you know. The 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 the, the and again, it's all human people. It's all it's all like real people doing that. You know, it's with people talk about CGI and you press on a button and suddenly it's great. It's not. <laughs> it's just like it's people working long hours, long time. You know. And very smart people uh, trying to make everything work together and sing. You know, it's 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 a it's a very collaborative uh, environment. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about because the film uses a combination of like motion picture, hand drawn elements, etc. Can you sort of talk about deciding on that, how those elements work together? In what in what sense you're uh, 
um, you mean in terms of the mixture of real, real, real plates and what we're adding to them? Mm -hmm. Especially because, I mean, you've said that sort of having something real as your base is always sort of yes. like where you like to start. Yeah. So sort of how how the marriage of all of that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's it's important for us, like, you know, first of all, for for James, for the actors, for the camera people and the lighting, it's always important for us to start from something that we can relate to. Um, and so actually on this show, you know, Beth Mikkel, our production designer, and uh, um, all our team, they really worked really hard to build as much as they could. You know, we built a, the big street of nowhere. They built everything up to the first floor. Even though even the apartments were built up to a second and third floor, there was a huge set. And that gives us so much that we can hang our CG on and, you know, we can texture it and we know it's lit and we're not just on a blue screen set where there's nothing and we don't know where to look at. Right. And that's something that James, uh, again, is driving a lot. Like he wants, he wants us to shoot something, you know, even mm. if it's a shot that is going to be mostly CG, we're going to shoot a stunt. We're going to shoot an explosion. We're going to shoot, we're going to light something so that we know we have something to hang on to and look at and say, hey, that thing looks real, but what you've put around it, <laughs> mm. not that real. So let's just, we know what, we know where the target is. And it's also, it just gives an energy to what we do that it feels real because it was shot with a person with a camera, you know, and um, I think that's the, that's, what works well is when you you get a right balance the combination between the two the two things you know when you go full full cg and uh and our flashbacks are our full cg renders there's nothing real in those but we had a set that we scanned and photographed and lit and and we had the actors that we filmed with real cameras so there's a physicality in that that is real and when even if it's a full cg shot in the end Everything we've learned from their, you know, their acting and the way it was filmed, the rhythm of how the camera moves around them, all that stuff actually comes from reality. And that makes our shots, even though they're full CG, more real. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the way that you are sort of speaking about your craft. I mean, I feel like, the event, I mean, of course, it really is a craft. So now that you are closing this chapter, three Oscar nominations under your belt. Um, where do you go from here? How do you, how have you evolved maybe as an artist and how do you hope to continue to evolve? I mean, it's, I'm already working on the next James Gunn film, you know, mm. uh, different studio, but <laughs> actually same, <laughs> same, same crew, uh, different, uh, different story. Um, and there's a lot of challenging stuff in this one. Uh, as always, James has a lot of challenges for us, so we're we're trying to find kind of figure it out. Um, and uh, I just love doing that. You know, I just love mm -hmm. working with with those characters and bringing them to life. You know, and 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 making people believe that that could really exist. You know, and 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 I, I love working with James because he's very focused on story and character. And and for me, it's like nothing we do should go against that. You know, and and. And I, I was actually thinking about it the other day, um, talking about Guardian 3, you know, like the reaction that people had when the movie came out and how they, they had so much emotion out of the story that James wrote and how we how we helped putting it on screen. And uh, and, and one of the, the reactions that I was reading the most was like people saying, how could a CGI raccoon make me cry, you know? And um, and there's been a lot of backlash against CGI lately. Um, you know, people just just uh, uh, being kind of negative about it. And and I was that, and that actually made me happy to see that people will use CGI almost as a compliment in that case. You know, it was like <laughs> this CGI raccoon looks so good and make me cry and make me feel so much as a human person about this CGI thing, these pixels. And um, and I think that's to me that's that's the thing I'm striving for. You know, it's like, how do we with our illusions? How do we make people feel something? Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's what I'm I'm striving for. You know, as much as I can help uh, on all these films. Um, thank you so much. Just before I let you go, is there anything that I didn't ask you about that you want to mention or have me include or final thoughts? 
anything of that nature. I think we've talked about, you know, fundamental. <laughs> we, yeah. We could still, we took could talk for four hours if you want to. to <laughs> I could talk everything. for four hours. But, uh, I would love to do that. I, I will. Too. If we have that time. No, yeah, uh, I'll check back in with you. But thank you so much. Yeah. And good luck in March. I'll be I'll be thank rooting you. for you. Um thank, oh, thank you. you. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was that was fun. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Take care. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye bye.